Hi everyone, Travis here with Teleport. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with Teleport 12 for Kubernetes Access. And we're gonna be working through the updated tutorial here in the docs. So if you go to goteleport.com slash docs, and then you come down to Kubernetes Access and click on Getting Started, you can follow along with me. First, we need to cover prerequisites. So you'll need a running Teleport cluster. For details on how to set this up, just check out one of these Getting Started guides, or we have a number of YouTube videos showing you how to do that. Next, you'll need Teleport 12, basically. Tcuttle admin tool or the TSH client tool version of greater than or equal to 12.1.0. And you can test this with Tcuttle version or TSH version. Next, you'll need the JQ tool to process JSON output, You'll need the following Kubernetes version or greater and Helm version or greater. And you can verify those with the following commands. And then finally, make sure you can connect to Teleport. So on your local machine, make sure that you can run the TSH login command and log in successfully. And with all of that out of the way, let's get started with the tutorial. So let's look at the deployment overview. In this guide, we're gonna deploy the Teleport Kubernetes service, which essentially connects our Kubernetes cluster to our Teleport cluster. So we have three parts here, we have the users, we have the Teleport cluster, and we have the Kubernetes cluster. So users will log into the Teleport cluster. Once they log in, they can run the kubectl commands. And then over here, we have a Teleport agent, which we're gonna be deploying today. Your Teleport agent lives in your cluster and talks back to the Teleport cluster. So users never directly talk to the Kubernetes cluster or the Teleport agent. The Teleport agent talks back to the Teleport cluster. All right, so let's move on to step one. Step one is to get a join token. In order to start the Teleport Kubernetes service, we'll need to request a join token from the Teleport auth service. So the Teleport cluster is made up of the Teleport proxy and the Teleport auth service. Here, we'll be requesting a join token from the auth service. To do that, you'll run this tcuttle command and save it in this token variable. After that, you're gonna run Helm repo add to add the Teleport Helm chart. You're gonna update the cache of the charts with Helm repo update. And then finally, you'll do a Helm install to deploy this Teleport cube agent on your Kubernetes cluster. Now you can do all of this one of two ways. You can follow these commands here, type them in your terminal, but I'm gonna take the second route today and I'm actually gonna log into my Teleport cluster and do this from the UI. So I'm gonna to go to my Teleport cluster UI Click on Kubernetes here on the left and add Kubernetes. And this gives you a wizard. I think it's easier. And it does essentially the same thing. So from here, I'll click next. And it says, step one, add teleport agent chart to your charts repository. Now you'll see here that the URL is charts.releases.teleport.dev. You can visit there and see our teleport Helm chart repo. You can also go to our GitHub repo and our teleport repository under examples and chart to see our Helm charts here. So we're gonna run this Helm repo add to add the chart and also Helm repo update to update the cache, which is essentially the same thing as is listed in the documentation here. Helm repo add, Helm repo update. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna to go to the EC2 instance where I'm running my Kubernetes cluster, which I'm just running Minikube in an EC2 instance for demonstration's sake and run this command. and that ran successfully. Step two is to generate a command to automatically configure and install the teleport agent namespace. So what namespace? I'm just gonna choose teleport. In my Kubernetes cluster name, since I'm using Minikube, I'm just gonna say uh, Minikube cluster. And as soon as I click next, it's gonna generate those commands for me. So if I go back to my tutorial, you'll see here I have this uh, Helm install teleport agent command with a number of variables. Cube cluster name, proxy address, auth token. So it's gonna generate the token for me. I don't have to generate that myself. It's gonna create the namespace and set the version, which the teleport Kubernetes service version should be the same as the teleport cluster version or up to one major version back. And you can set the version override with this variable, which we are doing. So from here, click next. And here are all the variables. So it's gonna create this pod cluster values YAML file with my auth token, proxy address, cube cluster name, all of that for me. And then it's gonna do the Helm install teleport agent. So I'm gonna copy this and run this for my Kubernetes cluster. And the teleport cube agent has been deployed. So I can do kubectl get pods and it's in container creating status. So let's give it a minute. And what's great about the wizard is once it detects your Kubernetes cluster, it'll say so down here, successfully detected your new Kubernetes cluster. 
And again, if I look at my tutorial here, I just did the same thing using the wizard instead of the CLI. So now I can click next and configure access, but I'm just gonna exit out of this to follow along with the tutorial. So if I click on Kubernetes now, you'll see my Minikube cluster enrolled in Teleport. So back to the documentation, we'll move on to step three, which is accessing your Kubernetes cluster. So remember, Teleport may enroll a resource, but it still has an RBAC system to grant people or block people from accessing that resource. So currently, we have enrolled the resource, but my user isn't able to access it. I don't have a role set up for that yet. So the next step is Kubernetes authentication. To authenticate to a Kubernetes cluster via Teleport, your Teleport roles must allow access as at least one Kubernetes user or group. So ensure that you have a Teleport role that grants access to the cluster you plan to interact with. So first, let's run this command to get the Kubernetes user for your current context. You can also check your kube config file, which should tell you this, but this is a quick one-liner to do so. So I'm gonna run this command here, and we see Minikube. So my user is Minikube. So now I need to create a role within Teleport to grant this Kubernetes access. So I'm gonna copy this, and it's telling me to create a file called kubeaccess.yaml. Again, this can be done from the CLI, like it says so here. I'm gonna do it from the UI. So if I go to Management and Roles, I'm gonna create a new role, paste that in. And what this does is it gives access to all Kubernetes clusters, basically. You can limit this by labels, but since I have these two stars, it's gonna grant access to all clusters. And with Teleport 12, we have pod level RBAC access, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, but just know that this role has access to all pods. You'll see the kind is pod, all namespaces, all names. And then the role grants access to the viewers Kubernetes group, which we haven't created yet. And for Kubernetes users, I'm gonna put Minikube, which is what it says here. Create a file with the following content, replacing user with the output of this command. So once you create that role, you use the tcuddle command line to create that role. Then you need to apply that role to your user. So tcuddle get users, it's gonna get your user, output it to this YAML file, from there, you'll add the cube access role to your user configuration, and then apply your changes to update your user. Again, I'm using the UI, so I'm just gonna click Save Changes. And then under Users, I'm gonna apply it to a user named Bob. So Options and Edit, we're gonna get rid of his access role and just give him cube access only. And click Save. Next, log out of your Teleport cluster and then log in again to assume this new role. So we're gonna log in as Bob. And an easy way to do this is just go to uh, Kubernetes and find your cluster and click on connect. And it should give you the steps here. So step one, log into Teleport. I'm gonna do that from my local computer because that's what developers would do. They would log in from their machine and do everything they need there. So I'm gonna paste that command in, but I don't wanna log in as the Teleport admin. I'm gonna log in as Bob. Enter my password and touch my security key. And I'm logged in as Bob. And you see here, Kubernetes is enabled. My user is Minikube and my group is viewers. And to access the cluster, we need to run the TSH cube login command. So we'll run this to log into the cluster. Again, this is what the developer would run from their local machine. Successfully logged into Kubernetes cluster, try kubectl version to test the connection. kubectl version, if I could spell. And we have a connection to our cluster. But if we do kubectl get pods, it's not gonna work. So pods is forbidden. User minikube cannot list resource pods in API group in the namespace default. Why is this? Because we don't have a group in Kubernetes that maps to this viewers group. So now that Teleport RBAC is configured, you can authenticate to your Kubernetes cluster via Teleport, which is what we just did. But to interact with your Kubernetes cluster, you'll need to configure authorization within Kubernetes. To do that, you need to create Kubernetes role bindings or cluster role bindings that grant permissions to the subjects listed in your role, the Kubernetes users and Kubernetes groups. For example, you can grant some limited read-only permissions to the viewers group used in the cube access role defined above. And that's what we're gonna do here. So remember, we created this role, this teleport role above, that granted access to this Kubernetes viewers group. 
So now in Kubernetes, we have to create that group. So we have an example down here of a cluster role binding we can use. And this is a kind of group. The name is viewers. And the role reference is gonna be a built-in default role for Kubernetes called view. This role already exists by default in Kubernetes. So we're gonna bind this role to our group viewers. And to do that, we just need to create a viewersbind.yaml file with this information. And then we use kubectl to apply it to our cluster. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to my EC2 instance running my Kubernetes cluster. I'm gonna do sudo vi viewers, I think it was viewersbind.yaml. Paste this information in, save it, and then just apply that new cluster role binding. So I'm gonna copy this and run it. And cluster role binding created. So now we should have a group called viewers in Kubernetes, which maps to our viewers group in Teleport. So to test this, let's go back to my terminal and I'm going to log out of Teleport, TSH log out, and log in again to get a fresh certificate. First, I'll log into my cluster and I should be able to do kubectl get pods successfully. And there we have it. We're now authorized to view pods in Kubernetes. And again, that's because our role that we created is tied to that Kubernetes viewers group. And we applied that role to our user, Bob. Now I mentioned earlier that one thing new in Teleport 12 is pod level RBAC, as you see here. So let's say, for example, we have another pod in our Teleport namespace. I'll just do kubectl run nginx image equals nginx, and I'll put it in the Teleport namespace. So now when Bob runs that command again, he's going to see two pods in the Teleport namespace, Teleport agent zero and nginx. But let's say that this role that is assigned to Bob and whoever else should only be able to access the pods related to teleport and not even see the nginx when they run that command. They shouldn't be able to touch nginx, only teleport related pods. And I know you're thinking, hey, well, it shouldn't be in the teleport namespace. Of course, but again, this is just a demonstration. So what we can do is we can go back to our role, management and roles. In this cube access role, if we want to tighten that up, we can put for the namespace, let's say this role can only access the teleport namespace and it can only access the teleport related pods. And what do we have? Teleport agent zero. Let's just say, let's do teleport uh, dash star. So anything teleport dash whatever. This role can only access those pods. So let's save it. And then let's log Bob out. TSH log out, log back in for a new certificate. All right, so let's log back into that cluster. And now when Bob runs something like kubectl get pods, he should only see teleport related pods in the teleport namespace only. And that's pod level RBAC, which is available in teleport 12. In addition to pod level RBAC in teleport 12, we also introduced passwordless Windows access, CLI support for GCP and Azure, which adds on to previous AWS support, more databases added, device trust, and a revamped Helm chart. For more information on those, make sure you check out this video, Introducing Teleport 12, on our YouTube page. I'll put a link to that below. And if you have any questions after watching this video, or you just wanna stay updated with what's going on with Teleport, be sure to check out our community Slack at goteleport.com slash Slack. Thank you for watching.